Nobody reads books anymore. Internet thoughts are only one sentence long, and that sentence is always misspelled. Uh, I don't mean to be a junior high English teacher about it, but uh, as friends, as you age, you get both dumber and smarter. Your brain works slower, but you've seen uh, a lot. You've seen the same, it's painful. It's painful to see the same mistakes being repeated and worsened. Most people, as the great sage Nenslow said, most people don't make the same mistake twice. They make the same mistake thousands of times. And uh, I have this uh, a, a younger friend of mine, Reverend Nikki Defchand. She had, uh, actually her name is, she got married. She's Reverend Nikki Defchand Wild now. She had a, a power dome in the art show last night. It was the death metal power dome. It was black and had studs and skulls and spikes all over it. Anyway, Nikki is 20 years younger than me, and she's going to live to see 20 years worth more dumbness. And she can have it, my friends. I don't want to, I honestly really don't want to see the world that my grandkids kid is going to have to deal with. It'll seem normal to them. And that's where it all gets kind of weird. When, when I was uh, very young, in, in the late 60s, there was a science fiction book by John Bruner. It's a big award winner called Stand on Zanzibar. Now, by chance, that book happened to be the sci-fi book that turned out to be hideously accurate. It was set more or less in these times, and what seemed like a horrible, nightmarish science fiction thing in the 60s just seems like the news now. I mean, it really is. If you run through the news, it's about like that horrible, and that book seemed so horrible in the 60s, and now it seems normal. We got used to it. And I don't want to have to see what my great-grandkids consider normal. I don't want to have to hear about the last mountain gorilla dying in some Sioux. But friends, it's a lot worse for normal old people. For the mutated weirdos uh, as they age, uh, it, it, I think it actually is easier. A lot of my peers sound, well, they, they get to be copies of their parents. And they say things like, that rap stuff, it's not even music. That's what my dad said about Devo. Yeah. Actually, he didn't say that about Devo, he said that about Jimmy Hendrix. But, uh, and who knows, maybe they're right, I don't care. As one of the irreverent Friday Jones said, all music is stupid, praise music. That's the best thing about it. But um, I, and probably uh, uh, many of you, obviously, the fact that you're here, you know, you can handle new things. Look at the band that just played. They took those old Devo tunes and twisted them and changed them and made different, completely new things out of them. Same tune, but yet it's a completely different tune. Weird covers in new styles. And friends, uh, you know, sure, we're here for an 80s band. But look how damned weird it continues to be. That is why Devo cannot and must not die, because it truly is, friends, duty now for the future. Praise God and praise the Devos. said, I have two copies of our new book out in my car if anybody needs it. I didn't want to set up a table and be stuck to it all day. But if somebody wants our, uh, uh, the, the, the Subgenius Cyclopedia of Slack, the Bobliographon, there is a, a piece by Mark Mothersby explaining his relationship with J.R. Bob Dobbs and what Bob did to Diva. Uh, he also did the same thing to the monkeys, by the way. <laughs> anyway, friends, Devo gets into everything. And via time machine,
They even get into Appalachian folk music of the 1920s, or in this case, of the 2020s. And friends, 